about the NCAA bracket and just kind of a quick overview of what I think is going to happen and obviously let me go ahead and just say I don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of variables and a lot of things that just happen in the NCAAs that you know just just craziness happens. A good example I do believe it was 2001 when Hampton defeated the uh, 15 seeded Hampton defeated second seeded Iowa State that year in a huge upset and that pretty much destroyed everyone's bracket that year. But let's go ahead and focus on the 2011 uh, road to the Final Four, which will culminate in Houston, in the Reliant, Reliant Stadium in Houston. A little bit of, of controversy because you had teams like UAB and Virginia Commonwealth uh, make the tournament, whereas teams like Alabama and Virginia Tech, they didn't make it. Uh, but the thing is, though, I think overall, I think the selection committee did a pretty good job in, in making the, their decisions. A couple of teams could have been seated higher. No. Texas could have been seated a lot higher, I think. I think Texas, at least in my opinion, Texas earned at least a three seed. A four seed's a little bit of a stretch. But you have teams like Richmond. Richmond's a, a great team from there from the Atlantic 10 Conference, and yet they're a 12 seed. You've got a team like Belmont. Belmont, I do believe, is from the Atlantic Sun Conference. They did a pretty good job this year as well, and they're a 13 seed. They could probably be a 10 seed. Either way, though, in this bracket, it's going to be very interesting to see who's going to make it and who's going to be the upset pick. Um, just a quick overview. In the East, I have North Carolina making it in the East bracket. They're going to struggle a little bit with Ohio State. Now, Ohio State, everyone's calling, the, everyone's saying that they are the team to beat in the East region. They are the, Ohio State, the Buckeyes, being the top seed in that bracket. But I think North Carolina has a little bit more power in, in, in their inside game than, uh, than Ohio State does. It'll be a great game if they do match up in the final two in the bracket, in the, in the uh, regional semifinals. A regional final, excuse me, in the final for that bracket, but we'll see what happens there. But I do believe North Carolina has a lot of intangibles to make it to the final four. So facing North Carolina, the team that will be playing North Carolina will come out of the West bracket, and this is the this is the bracket the Longhorns are in. I think San Diego State has propensity to make it to the final four. I know a lot of people think that's a crazy, crazy pick because San Diego State comes from a very small conference in the Mountain West, and the Mountain West hasn't really proven themselves in the past couple of years. I'll make the stay. I'll make the case though. In this bracket, you have a couple of really good teams, but there's not a whole lot of strong teams. Duke is very good, and Duke's a top seed in the West bracket. But the thing is with Duke. They have an issue in their personnel. Their top player, Kyrie Irving, of which he was he's been out for almost the entire season due to a toe injury. If Duke doesn't get him to play very well or he doesn't play at all in this tournament, it's gonna be it's gonna really spell big difficulties for Duke, who's not who has been playing well, but I'm not sure if they can last that long without and that much longer without Kyrie Irving. You got teams like Texas, and when I mentioned Texas, as good as Texas is, if they can't get their swagger, I'm not sure if Texas can, or swagger back, excuse me, I'm not quite sure if Texas can make that big of a run. UConn's very good as well, but they had to play four games in four days in the Big East tournament and to win the Big East tournament. That's going to be interesting to see if they can ma maintain that flow and that rhythm to win the, this Western bracket. And then you got a couple other teams in Arizona, Cincinnati, as well as Temple. They can make a big run for it. But I think San Diego State has it. They have the propensity to play very well down the stretch. They're the hot pick. They're a tough team. And they, I think, are going to give Duke a lot of problems. Duke's an inside team that likes to like to feed it to their big man inside and shoot from the inside. San Diego State's more of the run-and-gun type of team. And if they play their way, I do believe San Diego State will do a better job and win that bracket, the West bracket. On the other side of the field of 64... Uh, it'll be the Southwest region, and I think Kansas will sweep through that pretty easily. I, I really don't think Kansas will have much struggle. The Jayhawks, the Jayhawks have been playing very well this year out of the Big 12. 
And I think that the only real stumble they might have in the first, at least the first two rounds, if not the first three, will probably be in the third round, the Sweet 16 round, where they could either play a Louisville team is talented. They could play a Moorhead State team who's being picked to upset Louisville, Vanderbilt, and Richmond. Those four squads, they're all pretty good, so they can probably give Kansas a little bit of trouble. Not sure. I'm not sure though if Kansas will lose to them. And on the other side of that bracket, in the Southwest bracket, Notre Dame's okay. Notre Dame, though, I think out of the Big East, as good as they are, I'm not sure if if they really have the legs to support themselves all the way to the finals. And the same thing goes with the other Big Big East team in the tournament, Georgetown. I'm not sure if I'm not. In fact, in general, I'm just not sure if Big East teams because they 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 just beat each other up in their conference year year this year. They beat each other up so much, I'm not sure if they all are able to make a deep enough run. So I think Kansas will take that bracket fairly easily. They'll make it to the Final Four. And finally, in the Southeast, I'm calling right now the Southeast bracket. I'm going to call that the upset bracket. Because Pittsburgh has probably the hardest. Pittsburgh's the one seed. They have the hardest road to a Final Four if they do get there. Personally, I don't think they'll get there, but they have a very difficult road to get through. You have teams like Pittsburgh will be playing in the, in the second round, should Old Dominion win, the Old Dominion Monarchs. Or they could play Butler, who could defeat Old Dominion in the first round as well. The 8-9 game between the Bulldogs and the Monarchs of Butler and Old Dominion. Pittsburgh has to go through them. Other teams in this bracket, Wisconsin. They're pretty good, too, out of the Big Ten. Belmont, another strong, strong opponent. They are an upset upset uh, dream here in the NCAAs this year. A lot of people are picking them as probably the lowest-seeded upset in the tournament. Other squads, of course, BYU. BYU is talented. Jimmer Fredette has probably has one of the best games in the nation right now. He's playing some of the best basketball. Even though they lost their big man in the middle, BYU still is a pretty talented and, and scary team to play. And Florida. Florida as well, they're, they're a pretty big opponent. So that's a really difficult bracket to kind of to kind of to see who's going to get to the Final Four. I think there's going to be a couple of upsets. I do think Gonzaga, Belmont, and Utah State are going to win their ball games, and that's the 11, 13th, and 12. Excuse me, that's the 11, 12, and 13 seeds. So, uh, and it'll be Gonzaga's the 11, Utah State's 12, and Belmont's the 13. But those three seeds, I think, are going to make waves, and they're going to upset their higher seeded opponents. At the end of it all, though, I do think BYU wins the Southeast and they'll make it to the Final Four. So, when we get to the Final Four, at least in my opinion, you have two regulars in North Carolina and Kansas, and two newcomers out of the Mountain West, San Diego State and BYU. In the Final Four, I see North Carolina taking care of San Diego State, because North Carolina is a much stronger team, and they'll have more experience in that ballgame than the Aztecs do. And I see Kansas defeating BYU. It'll be a strong offensive ballgame, but I think Kansas with the Morris Twins in the middle are still too strong. The final game will be Kansas and North Carolina, one versus two, and I think North Carolina and Houston will take it for the national championship here in 2011. So Kansas, they'll play hard, I think they'll play well, but I think North Carolina just has a little bit too much on the inside. But I, I, again, it's going to be a really great game if these two teams do match up in the championship game. I got the Tar Heels winning it all, a very close ball game. So that's that's kind of my opinion on the 2011 March Madness bracket. Once again, there is so much uncertainty in the brackets. We can talk all day about how we think one team will make it and how one team won't, and then the next day that game happens and. Lo and behold, that team you thought that was going to win, they're done. So there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of a lot of mystery and a lot of a lot of shadow in this. A lot of a lot of uh, prognostication, I guess. A lot of prognostication and bracket forming. But that's the fun of it all. We love it here in America. We love this this ideology of just making brackets and just thinking that we are sports uh, prognosticators. The first ball games start on Thursday, and they continue all the way to the weekend. This is going to be a great March Madness. I think this is going to be a very 
interesting March Madness. A lot of good teams, a lot of good basketball. So watch and enjoy. And next podcast, hopefully we'll be talking about a Texas victory, two Texas victories. And moving on to the third round, of the, or the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Tournament.